Hello again there everybody, uh, Dan Calloway here coming to you from the Linux Unix Tech Channel and today I want to get into the terminal and uh, I want to talk about compressing files in Linux uh, and what I mean by that is uh, compressing those files so that they uh, reduce the amount of space on the disk uh, in what's really referred to as an archive for all intents and purposes. Let me go ahead and open up um, a file that I have here and I have in my Sublime text editor uh, so I can be kind of a guide to follow along with what I'm doing here today. And so the topic of this uh, video is going to be how to compress one or more files in Linux using the command line interface. So we are going to get into the terminal today. And basically uh, there are two commands that can be used to, to compress files in Linux. The first one is called gzip and uh, that's a GNOME zip um, compression algorithm and that's for compressing a single file all right uh, you cannot use gzip if you want to compress uh, or archive more than one file at a time the second algorithm that we're going to look at is the one that's standard in all Linux distributions and that is uh, called zip uh, for compressing multiple files and we'll look at both of those uh, there are other compression algorithms, as I've noted here. Uh, BZ2 is another one, but we're not going to be discussing those today. We're going to be looking only at gzip and zip uh, primarily. Uh, one of the things, though, I do want to note here is that uh, for, for Linux newbies or somebody that may not be aware, uh, you probably have heard of uh, the term tarball uh, used in Linux. And tarballs are used to back up files. Uh, in Linux. Um, they are the files that end in .tar file extension and where that comes from it's it's a throwback really to the early days of Unix uh, but the TAR stands for tape archive files and uh, and they were used to um, archive files to tape drives okay so when you create a tarball it's really intended in the, in the Unix world to be archived to a, a tape drive uh, for storage and retrieval later. Don't confuse that with compression. Tarballs do not offer any compression. The only thing that offers compression are zip utilities uh, or algorithms, gzip or zip. Alright, so let's look at using gzip. Alright, so gzip will compress a single file and will compress this file in place. What, I, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is, is if you have multiple files in a folder or directory, uh, you can only zip one of those at a time using gzip. And when you do zip it, the original file gets zipped up. Okay, It does not remain in place uh, along with the gzip file. Um, and I'll demonstrate that now. All right, so what I've done is I've created a folder out on my um, home directory under the documents directory called sandbox for our purposes here today in this demonstration and I've copied two files into that directory uh, from my uh, home directory and these two files are hidden files one's called dot bash underscore history and the second one's called dot bash underscore profile and what I'm going to do is I'm going to compress the dot bash underscore history file using the gzip to show you how that's done so let me get out to the terminal and let me get into the terminal here and I'm gonna go ahead and take this up to full screen and then I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so we can see uh, a little bit better alright so I'm in the uh, home directory now so let me change directory into sandbox and let me run a listing uh, to show you that there are the two files that I copied from my home directory into the sandbox directory. So we are in the sandbox directory right now. And that's the dot bash underscore history and the dot bash underscore profile. I'm going to take this first file here and I'm going to um, zip it up using gzip and show you what happens. All right, so let us uh, let me clear the screen again. Let me run another uh, ls.alh. What the capital A does, by the way, 
on this particular switch is it shows the hidden files but does not show the dot and the dot dot file. Those are two other dot files or two hidden files that are on every Linux system. If you use a little a here, let me just demonstrate that, you will see the dot and the dot dot files. We don't want to see those necessarily in this demonstration. And so that's, let me clear the screen. That's why you want to see um, that one right there, okay? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to issue the command gzip.bash the tab to um, clear it to finish it off and that should have created the zipped archive of dot bash dot underscore history so let's run that uh, listing again and sure enough you can see that the dot bash underscore history dot gz file has been created here okay uh, but what did it do? It did exactly what I had said. It took the file, the original file here, and it zipped it up to a .gz file in place. And the .bash underscore history file now is, uh, is no longer existing. Okay, it's been replaced. How do you unzip that file so you get the .bash underscore history file back? And the way to do that is to do the gunzip some people call it gunzip with the gunzip command uh, and we're going to run it against the dot bash underscore history dot gz file hit the enter key on the keyboard and then let's run that uh, command again to list it out and you can see that now we have the dot bash underscore history file returned and we have lost the dot gz file because we've unzipped that file in place Okay, let's go back to our um, screen here that we have, we have set up and look at the next thing we want to do. That's gzip is used for one file and in place compression. Now what we want to do is we want to compress multiple files in Linux. And to do that, we're going to use the zip command instead of the gzip because we can do that with the zip command. And so to compress both the dot bash uh, underscore history and the dot bash underscore profile files into an archive file that I'm going to call archive.zip. We're going to use this command right here zip archive.zip, which is the file we're going to zip it into, and then the two files that we want to zip up. So let's go back out to the terminal and let me go ahead and clear the screen and let's issue the command zip, and then the file we want to zip up is archive dot zip that's the file we want to create and then we want to do the dot bash underscore history and then the dot bash underscore profile okay hit the enter key on the keyboard and what we get back is it says that it's adding the dot bash underscore history and the dot bash underscore profile it's deflated the first one to 72 percent and deflated the second one to 11 percent now it's called deflation because instead of compression because what that's doing is it's saving 72 percent of uh, disk space by compressing that file it's saving 11 percent of disk space by compressing that file right there so let's run a listing again uh, here and see what we have alright so now what we have is we have two, these two original files and we have now an archive.zip file Okay which is 7.4 kilobytes in size. All right. The original file .bash underscore history was 25 kilobytes in size, which is about uh, a little over three times the size of this file right, right here. And then this one was negligible in size, 158 bytes. And so we've, we've conserved a lot of space here uh, by archiving this up. All right, now to unzip the file, I'm going to go ahead and delete these two files first so that you can see the process of unzipping. So I'm going to remove the .bash files and let's run that listing again to show you that they are removed. All right, so they're gone. And now I'm going to unzip this file and restore these two files back to their original uh, condition. To do that, I'm going to run the unzip archive.zip command. And you can see now that it is inflating 
both the dot bash underscore history and the dot bash underscore profile. And if we run a listing out again of those, of that directory, you know, sandbox, you can see that we now have those two files restored and we still have the original archive.zip, even though we unzipped it. Okay. Basically what we did was we extracted these two files back out again from this compressed zip file. Okay, so that's zipping and unzipping files. Let's go back out to our cheat sheet here and um, uh, let's go up to the next tab and what we're going to do is we're going to look at encrypting this archive file that we've created here. So if you want to encrypt the archive file that you just created, you can accomplish this by running the command zip cloak of the archive file. Okay, so let's go back out to the terminal and let me uh, clear the screen again. Let me run the command to get one more listing. All right, and now I'm going to encrypt uh, the archive.zip file. And so to do that, we're going to use zip cloak archive.zip. All right, it's asking me for a password. I'm going to put that in. It's asking me to verify the password. I'm going to put that in. All right, and now it's encrypted that. Okay. It uh, has you verify the password, obviously, because, you know, if you make a mistake in the original password, if it doesn't uh, allow you to verify it, you might mistype and you may not be able ever to get back in that file again. So by typing it twice, it kind of guarantees that you're going to be able to get the right password. All right, so let's go back out to, let's do the listing, rather, again, and take a look at that. Now, you can't tell that this file is archived just by looking at it. All right, but there are ways to determine whether it's archived or not. And let's look at how you can do that. So let's go to the next tab. And one way you can do that is uh, ob obtain details about the contents of the archive file. And we can do that by running the zip details of that file, archive.zip. Now, one of the issues you've got with zip details is that it's going to be difficult to peruse the file because it does output a lot of information. And so what you might want to do is you might want to use grep here and search for a specific piece of information in that file when you uh, uh, get the details on the file. So what I've done here is I've shown you uh, the command zip details against the archive.zip file. And then I went out and grepped for a string called UID. So I'm looking for anywhere in that file where there's the string UID okay, on the details. If I run the original command, let me uh, go out and list again. And if I run the zip details against the archive.zip, you can see we got tons of information here. Okay, so let's clear the screen. This time, let's run the zip details against the archive. But let's pipe that out to grep and let's grep for the string UID, okay? Hit the enter key, and so what that does is it goes out and greps for only the UID information in that particular output, standard output, generated by the zip details of that archive.zip file. And so there it is, and so you can see how the details works, all right? Another command that you can use, though, um, to get the same information here um, on the zip details is that zip has its own grep functionality. It has its own command called zip grep. And so what you can do is you can run zip grep and use another, you know, a string. You can use UID if you want to. I'm just going to choose alias here. Um, so you, you do the zip grep and then the string you want to grep for the archive.zip file, and then which file do you want to look at, okay? So let me just go ahead and copy this command so I don't have to retype it. And let me do a control C to copy that command out. And let's go back out to the terminal. And let's do a clear the screen. And let me do a control shift V to uh, paste that command out onto the screen in the terminal. And so we're going to run zip grep, and we're going to look for the string alias in the file archive.zip, and we're going to look for the dot bash underscore history in that zip file. Okay, so let's hit enter, and it's uh, asking us for a password. Now, why is it asking us for a password? 
Well, it's asking us for the password because we remember we encrypted that file. And so we uh, need to provide that password. And there you go. Now, that's one way of proving that that file was archived because we had to provide a password to get into it. What we got back was any instance within the bash under, dot bash underscore history file where the word or string of alias exists, okay? So that's what we got back from running that command. So it worked very well. Let's go back to uh, our cheat sheet here. Let's go to the next tab here. And let's look at getting simple information from a file, an archive file, as opposed to a lot of detail. So if we want to get much simpler printout, what we can do is we can use a command called zip info of the archive zip. Now what the zip info does is it provides details. One, it provides details regarding the file size and the number of entries. In other words, the number of files within that archive. And it also provides details regarding the level of compression used in that um, compression algorithm zip. Okay, So let's go back out and let me clear the screen and let's run the uh, listing again so we can see what we got. We have the archive.zip and so now we're going to run zip info against archive.zip. Okay? And so you can see the information that's uh, generated here. It says the zip file size is 75, 17 bytes. Okay. Number of entries is two. All right. Uh, this shows the detail of the file. And notice there is no owner name and group owner name here, but there's a UNX right here. And then out from the size of the file, there's a TX, DEFN. Okay. That indicates that we've compressed this file, that this is a compressed file now. And so the two files that are inside this particular archive.zip without even opening it are .bash underscore history and .bash underscore profile. And then if you look at the last line of this, it says two files, 25035 bytes uncompressed, 7163 bytes compressed, and the compression ratio is 71.4%. That's a lot of information from just one command. And that command, again, is zip info archive.zip. Now, you, you have to understand that we only compressed two files here. We could, we could compress hundreds of files, thousands of files. It's going to list out every one of them. And then it's going to give us the average compression used by the zip um, compression algorithm uh, to make that possible. Okay, so this is a very good command, zip, zip info. Let's go back out to our cheat sheet again, and let's look at adding comments to, to zip archives. All right, you can do that. I'm not really sure what the purpose of that is, but it's possible that it can be done, so I just wanted to show you this. Let me just read this off here. It says, you can add comments to archive files so that when details are obtained on the file, you can read the comments that the person who archived the file, could be yourself, has left. And to accomplish this, we're going to use a command called zip note. Okay. Zip note does three things here. Zip note archive dot zip um, here, and we're going to redirect the output of the zip note archive dot zip to comp to a file called comments. And what that does is that creates a comments file that we can then modify. So let's go back out to the uh, terminal. Let's clear the screen. And we uh, list out the files again. And so we're going to use uh, zip note. And we're going to zip note on archive.zip against that file. We're going to redirect the output of that zip note command to a file called comments. All right. And hit the enter key. All right. Now let's list out that again and show you that there is now a comments file. And it's uh, not empty. It's got 125 bytes of information in it. All right, so that's the first thing that occurred when we did that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, uh, look at the comments file, and we're going to uh, uh, modify that particular file. Okay, So we're going to use the zip notes of archive.zip at the end to look at the comments after we've written it back. 
but let's go in and let's take and uh, let's run Kate, which is a text editor against comments, and let's take a look at that file. And you can see here that this is uh, what we have in that comments file right here. So we've got the first file that was in the archive.zip. Then we've got a comment above this line. Then we've got the second file here, .bash underscore profile, comment above this line, and then zip file comment below this line. So what's that mean? If I want to make a comment about .bash underscore history, then above this line, okay, I want to write out that comment. This is, whoops, let me go up. This is my .bash underscore history file. Okay, let's come down. And above this line, we're going to write comments about the dot bash underscore profile. This is my dot bash underscore profile file. Now, obviously, this is not what this is used for, but that's what I'm going to use it for, make it simple. And then I'm going to write uh, a comment here about the entire archive file itself. And I'm going to say this is the archive file that was generated. Okay, now I'm going to save both of, uh, I mean, I'm rather, I'm going to save this file. And so now we have an updated comments file. I'm going to go ahead and close Kate. And I'm going to re-list out those files. So now you can see that instead of 125 being the size of comments, now this file is 229 bytes in length, which means we've modified the file, we've made it bigger. And so now this particular file has the comments that we want to write back into the archive.zip. The way to do the writing back into the archive.zip file is to run zip note again and then use the W switch against the archive.zip and then redirect the, the comments content back into the file as opposed to redirecting out to the comments. Okay, And so let's go back out to the terminal. And let's uh, clear the screen and let's list out the files again. And let's write uh, zip note, the W switch archive.zip. Let's redirect it back to the file as opposed to into the file and comments. Okay, and so what we're doing is we are using zip note, writing the file archive.zip with the contents of the zip file. All right, so I'm going to hit enter. It doesn't return anything to us. And now in order to see what the new archive.zip file looks like, we're going to run zip note against archive.zip. Okay, and so here is the file. Dot bash underscore history. This is my dot bash underscore history file. Comment above this line here. And so it's the same file that we had initially, archive.zip except this time now it contains all of our comments that we wanted to add into it. And that was obtained by looking at the uh, contents of the archive.zip, not the contents of the comments file. All right. Okay, so I've accomplished everything I wanted to do in today's video, uh, except uh, one other thing I want to show you before I conclude the video. And that's to show you how you can use a, another command another command for zip okay called zip split which splits an archive file into multiple archive compressed files and there may be a reason you want to do that uh, instead of keeping one one and uh, you know singular file you may want to split that up you might want to put part of one file on one uh, directory on another one on another you might want even want to put it out on another drive somewhere okay the only thing you have to remember is uh, when you split out the archive.zip that you've created is you want to look at the largest file and you can obtain that from using uh, zip info you want to look at the largest file in that compressed zip file uh, and you want to get its size and then you want to add just a little bit more to that just to give it some breathing room before you make the split because if you don't what will happen is it will try to split the file the largest file itself um, into sections and you don't want to do that it won't work and so the command that we use here is zip split dash n size of the split which is the largest file size plus a small amount 
against the archive. Okay, so let's go and go back to the terminal. Let's clear the screen again and let's uh, list out the contents. Let's take a look at um, this particular file. I think we can run uh, zip info again against archive.zip. And we can see that one of the files here is 24876 and the other one is 158. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this particular archive at about 24880. Okay. And so I'm going to run the command zip split dash in or tac in 24880 archive dot zip. All right, and so that completed the process. One zip file will be made 100% efficiency, creating archive1.zip. So now we have an archive.zip and an archive1.zip. Let's list out the files again. And there you go. Archive1.zip is about 7.4K in size, and archive.zip is 7.5K in size. So Zip split split up the original archive.zip file here, okay, into two archive files here, this one and that one. It's a very efficient tool, very quick, quick process in doing it. Uh, like I said, you could split up an archive to put them out on different drives for whatever reason, or different directories for whatever reason, but that's, you know, it's possible to do that, and this is how you do it. Okay, so this has been uh, a video on compression in Linux of files, either singularly or multiple files, and then other zip commands that are used uh, in Linux for various purposes. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please uh, put those questions or comments down below. And also, uh, you know, subscribe to my channel and uh, have a nice day.